Organ transplantation offers patient a new lease of life. Organ transplant is something that is close to my heart. It's very important to uh, give patients this opportunity to have another chance okay, at living life to the fullest. Our patients keep us going day after day, year after year. This is the most satisfying aspect that the patients have gone back to normal life. At the end of the day, yeah, the patient is well. That's the biggest motivation now. Seeing that somebody is cured of their pain, it's amazing. The National University Centre for Organ Transplantation is a centre that brings together the activities related to organ donation and transplantation under one roof. We care for patients, we care for the donors, and we are also educators and researchers in transplantation. One of the pioneers in kidney disease and kidney failure treatment was Professor Kuhn Tech from the University Department of Medicine. He felt very passionate about treating patients with kidney failure so he began planning for a transplant program. Therefore, Singapore's transplant journey began in 1970 when the first kidney transplant was done by Professor Chan Kang To. He was from the university unit from NUS at the time. It was a, a whole village that got together to start the transplant program so that we could have treatment for patients with kidney failure because dialysis alone was not going to be sustainable. The numbers that of kidney transplants that were done was very few. They had to find ways to expand the kidney transplant program. So a group of tr transplant surgeons, which included Professor Abu Ralph and Professor Fung Wing Chong, started the Living Donor Kidney Transplant Program in 1976. We had a lot of problems getting society to accept donation of their relatives who are dying. The shortage of kidneys was quite substantial. Then we had the living donor program. That means patients who are willing to part with their kidney and donate it. Initially, it was only for relatives and expanded it to other donors like emotional donors, altruistic donors. In 1985, when NUH started, Evan was the head of department. He was involved with the medical aspects of renal transplant, preoperative preparation, postoperative immunosuppression. Liver transplant is a highly, much more complex uh, procedure than kidney transplant. First liver transplant patient was from KL because we were doing it first time. And it was difficult. It was very stressful. Fortunately, the operation went off very well and she recovered very well. The first successful pediatric liver transplant done in Singapore took about nearly 12 or 13 hours. Very fortunately, we were quite successful and the patient is still alive and well. NUH, Pediatric Liver Transplant is the only program in Singapore. This is out of necessity because over the years, more and more local patients come to us for liver transplant. Singapore is a very small country, so it is better to have a single program so that the expertise can be concentrated at one place. We have come a long way. Now liver transplant automatically become a normal treatment option available for patients with end-stage liver disease. We were very fortunate to, to establish this uh, uh, first and only kidney transplant program for children in Singapore because of the efforts of the, the uh, pioneers in adult transplantation. We started the Pediatric Kidney Replacement Program actually in 1988 when the first uh, child was actually started on dialysis. We knew that it was not sustainable in the long term. Kidney transplant is probably the best form of kidney replacement therapy. Fortunately, the parents were with us and therefore the mother uh, immediately agreed to donate her kidney to the child. I'm really glad to say that that very first transplant has lasted so long till today, more than 30 years. I think as a, a surgeon or urologist or clinician, we should always uh, strive for new ideas and make sure that uh, it will benefit uh, our patients. 
the new method that we started to use 20 years ago is hand-assisted laparoscopic donor nephrectomy. To be a donor with this new method of kidney donation, their recovery period will be much faster and the pain will be much less. And therefore, more uh, kidney donors are willing to come forward. I used to work in Scotland, where I was there during the time pancreas transplant was introduced. It did not exist here. I worked with my co-director, who is Professor Vatsala. We worked with the Ministry of Health. We put a proposal, MOH went through it, and initially gave us some grants. We presented the results. All were good outcome. And these were young people who went back to work. Their quality of life suddenly changed. After deliberations in MOH, they decided that we will fund it as a regular program. The success of these programs cannot reside on the surgeries alone, because we also have to have immunosuppression to manage these patients. Even in patients who receive immunosuppression, about 40% of them will develop rejection of their donor organ over time. Research that we do is trying to understand why there are certain patients who develop rejection and why certain patients don't. And we hope to have a real impact on patients' lives by increasing the success of transplants as a result of our research. I think the future is very bright for NUCOT. We apply innovations and we maintain the highest standards. In liver transplant, pancreas transplant, and kidney transplants, we match, if not uh, exceed, the, the uh, outcomes from in other bigger countries. We've made tremendous strides. We're able to do so much complex surgeries and we're able to offer better lives for a lot more patients with less complications. We came together with one purpose in mind, and that is to save lives of patients with organ failure, give them the life that they deserve. Patients are in the center of what we do, and I'm privileged to be able to work with such a wonderful team who all work together with this purpose. To us in Newcott, Transplantation is not only adding years to their lives, but life to their years.